na Biblia ikinena kuhusu huyu kahaba hapa. This prostitute. Huyu kahaba. That the Bible talks about here. Ambaye Biblia inazungumzia hapa. Uh, you can see. Unaweza kuona. The Bible also talks about how she is dressed. Biblia pia inaelezea vile amevalia. Her clothes. Mavazi yake. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. How her clothes look like. Jinsi mavazi yake yanakaa. And uh, you can also read uh, when you are reading the book of uh, Revelation chapter 19. Pia unaweza kusoma wakati unasoma kitabu cha Ufunuo Yohana 19. It talks about how the bride of Christ is dressed. Inasungumza vile ambavyo biharusi wa Kristo amevalia. But today we are on Revelation 17. Lakini leo tunaangazia Ufunuo Yohana 17. So the Bible says. Biblia inasema. But in this uh, book uh, Revelation 17. Hapa kwa kitabu Ufunuo uh, Yohana 17. In the Bible talks about this great prostitute. Wakati Biblia inasungumzia huyu kahaba mkuu who is seated on the scarlet beast. Ambaye amekaa juu ya mnyama mwekundu. So we are talking about a church. Kwa hivyo tunazungumzia kanisa. Are we together? Je, tuko pamoja? Bwana sifiwe. Now, Sasa, during your free time, wakati wako wa ziada, you can read Ezekiel chapter 22. Unaweza kusoma Ezekiel 22. The Bible talks about two daughters. Biblia inazungumzia kuhusu binti wawili of the same mother. Wa kutoka mama moja. One moja is called Ohola. Anaitwa Ohola. And another one Oholiba. Mwingine anaitwa Oholiba. Ohola the Bible says. Ohola Biblia inasema she is Samaria. Yeye ni Samaria. Oholiba, Oholiba is Jerusalem. Ni Jerusalem. These were daughters of the same mother. Hao walikuwa binti wa mama moja. Then the Bible says na Biblia nasema, that they were pledged to be married by the Lord. Ya kwamba walikuwa wamewekwa waolewe na Bwana. Then the Lord lakini took them bwana, when they were young. Akawachukua wakiwa wadogo. When they were being given birth. Wakati walikuwa nazaliwa. When nobody washed them. Wakati hakuna mtu aliwasafisha. Nobody tied the umbilical cord. Hakuna mtu alifunga kitofu. Nobody even uh, rubbed salt on the umbilical cord. Hakuna hata mtu alipaka chumvi kwa kitofu. Nobody was there to take care of them. Hakuna mtu alikuwa pale kuwashughulikia. The Lord. Lakini Bwana came. Alikuja. Took them. Akawachukua cleaned them akawasafisha and dressed them na akawavalisha bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe then the bible says alafu biblia nasema that they turned and became prostitutes ya kwamba waligeuka wakawa makahaba ezekiel explains this ezekiel anaeleza hii that they moved away ya kwamba walitoka walipotoka like a woman who leave her husband kama vile mwanamke anaviacha mume wake and go and live with other men na kwenda kuishi na wanaume wengine then the bible here says na biblia hapa inasema the reason that uh, Jerusalem and Samaria sababu ambayo Yerusalemu na Samaria cried like this walielezewa hivi because they went and started worshiping other gods ni kwa sababu walienda na wakaanza kuabudu miungu mingine that's what the, the bible the lord calls prostitution before him hicho ndicho bwana anaeleza kama ukahaba mbele zake so when you see this woman kwa hivyo unapomwona huyu mwanamke in Revelation 17 katika ufunuo Yohana 17 the bible says biblia inasema that she is a prostitute ya kwamba yeye ni kahaba it is the church ni kanisa that worships idols ambalo linaabudu sanamu haleluya haleluya that worships idols linaabudu sanamu haleluya haleluya also we we discuss about uh, uh, what is written in uh, in uh, Ephesians pia tulisungumzia kile kimeandikwa katika kitabu cha Waefeso but I want us now we refer to verse 9 of Revelation chapter 17 lakini sasa nataka turejelee mstari wa 9 ufunuo Yohana mlango wa 17 eh, 17 9 mlango wa 17 mstari wa 9 listen to verse 9 sikiza mstari wa 9 it says inasema this calls for a mind with wisdom hapa ndipo penye akili pamoja na hekima the seven heads vile vichwa saba uh, the seven heads vile vichwa saba are seven hills on which a woman sits ni vilima saba ambayo huyo mwanamke amekalia bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe haleluya haleluya now sasa i want to bring you to our current world Nataka niwalete kwa dunia yetu ya sasa There is a picture I have given uh, Calvin Kuna picha ambayo nimempatia Calvin I know you know who this is Ninajua kama mnamfahamu huyo ni nani This was a picture that was on Daily Nation Hii ni picha ambayo ilikuwa kwa gazeti la Daily Nation On the weekend of uh, on the weekend of of Easter Weekend ya Easter 2010 ya pasaka ya mwaka 2010 this man huyo mtu is now dead sasa amekufa he is the head of catholic church alikuwa ndiye uh, 
kiongozi wa kanisa la katoliki they had written of a scandal that was in catholic church walikuwa wameandika uh, kuhusu kashfa fulani ambayo ilikuwa katika kanisa la katoliki whereby when he was a bishop in in, uh, in germany where he comes from ambapo wakati alikuwa askofu kule ujerumani mahali anatoka he allowed small boys to be sodomized aliruhusu vijana wadogo kulawitiwa But then lakini what shocked me kilicho neshtua is how he is dressed ni vile ambavyo amevalia Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is how he is dressed. Ni vile ambavyo amevalia. Because I was reading Daily Nation. Kwa maana nilikuwa nasoma gazeti la Daily Nation. I saw how they are describing him. Na nikaona vile wanamuelezea. I realize actually that is what the Bible is written. Nikagundua kwamba kika hivyo ndivyo Biblia imeandikwa. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. You can see. Unaweza kuona. The Bible says. Biblia inasema. That he is dressed in purple. Ya kwamba amevalia zambarau. And scarlet. Na nyekundu. And he is adorned with gold. Na amerembeshwa na dhahabu. And he is holding a cup. Na ameshikilia kikombe. When you look at him he is holding a cross what looks like a gold cross eh? ameshikilia ukimwona huyu ameshikilia kitu amena kaa kama msalaba wa dhahabu do you remember our jesus asking the father please father remove this cup from me je mnamkumbuka bwana wetu yesu akimwomba baba tafadhali niondolee hii kikombe jesus was referring to the cross yesu alikuwa na, ana, anarejelea msalaba but if you cross if you can you are able to zoom closer the cross that he is holding lakini kama unaweza kuangalia kwa karibu ile msalaba ambayo ameshikilia at the center pale katika There's something that looks like a lamp. Kuna kitu ambaye inafanana na mwana kondoo. But if you zoom closer. Lakini ukileta uh, karibu zaidi. You see I think it has eight eight horns. Utagundua kwamba iko na pembe nane. Normally a lamp has two. Ka, kwa kawaida mwana kondoo ana pembe mbili. But this one. Lakini hii hapa has so many horns. Iko na pembe mingi. Then that cross. Alafu hiyo msalaba has a some diamond patterns iko ina iko na mchoro kama wa almasi uh, mtindo wa almasi you know diamond eh? like this like triangular so many eh? inatengenezwa kama almasi mingi so when you look at it kwa hivyo ukiangalia you can see it something like uh, the skin of a serpent ina inaleta umbo kama la ngozi ya nyoka so the question is kwa hivyo swali ni why would anyone want to put such things on a cross kwa nini mtu hataki kuweka vitu kama hivyo kwa msalaba on a normal thing on a normal day kwa siku ya kawaida then halafu i don't know what he has here sijui ni nini ako hapa ako nacho hapa kwa kichwa but the bible says lakini biblia inasema that he has a name ya kwamba anayo jina that is written misery ambaye imeandikwa siri has a, a forehead that was a misery kichwa chake palikuwa pameandikwa jina siri that is babylon the great the mother of prostitutes and the abominations of the earth babeli mkuu mama ya makahaba na machukizo ya dunia bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe you can remove it uh, it was just for educational purposes unaweza toa ilikuwa kwa sababu tu ya kusomesha so we are talking yes thank you for bringing back the glory Haleluya. Haleluya. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. I think when the glory came you'd have clapped. <laughs> Nilidhani wakati utukufu imerudishwa pale mngepiga makofi. Now. Sasa. Listen to what the Bible says. Sikiza kile Biblia inasema. That you know unajua on the first value ukiangalia tu kwa mtazamo wa macho that was a man hiyo ilikuwa mwanadamu but he represents a church Lakini leadership of a church anawazilisha uongozi wa kanisa fulani the church is the one that is a woman kanisa ambaye ni mwanamke bwana asifiwe So we are not talking about women ladies eh wale wanaitwa when we are talking you know when i used to wonder why people say that ladies first eh atuongelei wanawake yani kina dada sijui wali kwa nini watu walikuwa nasema wanawake kwanza but i came to learn that people normally say ladies and gentlemen so they start with ladies haikuwa jambo kubwa nikakuja kujua nasema mabibi na mabwana kwa hivyo si kitu kubwa haleluya sidio Eh hiyo ni jambo kubwa ni venye watu wanasema wakitoa speech wanasema <coughs> ladies and gentlemen so that's why the ladies comes for see mambo kubwa <laughs> haleluya tuko pamoja now sasa the reason i have described this because that has been a misery sababu nimeeleza hii ni kwa sababu hii imekuwa siri then kisha when now it is brought you you now understand that this is we are talking about a church wakati sasa imeletwa na ukaelewa kwamba tunazungumzia kanisa the reason i have brought you Sab- him here sababu ambayo nimemleta hapa we are told that the woman tunaambiwa kwamba huyu mwanamke she that is uh, the seven heads yani hiyo vichwa saba they are the seven hills ni hizo vilima saba where the woman the prostitute sits ambaye huyu mwanamke kaaba anakalia before rome was founded 
kabla Rome kuanzishwa uh, there are seven hills that are around Rome kuna milima saba ambayo imezunguka ile uh, taifa la Rome and they boasted small settlement so settlement meaning that people even today people have built on those mountains on those hills na watu wameka na watu wamejenga manyumba yao ya kuishi katika hizo vilima saba then halafu this group of people they interacted hawa watu waliweza kutangamana then they merged together alafu wakaungana pamoja symbolizing that is symbolized by the construction of uh, the the Savian walls Ambaye, around the those seven traditional hills around Rome ambazo ambaye inaashiriwa na kujengwa kwa ukuta ambaye imezunguka hizo um, milima saba ambayo imezunguka Roma If you google the mountains of Rome Ukiweza kuangalia kwa mtandao milima ya Rome you see that each has a settlement each has is like a city on top of that hill Utagundua kwamba kila mo, kila moja hiyo kilima ina makazi ya watu ni kama ni kama mji nda, juu ya mlima Then St Peter Square is built at the center. Alafu uh, St Peter Square imejengwa katikati. Where? Ambapo the seat of uh, the Pope is. Ambapo uh, yule ambaye ni kiongozi mkuu wa kanisa katoliki anaishi. So these hills. Kwa hivyo hizi hivi vilima they have names. Ziko na majina. They have names. Ziko na majina that uh, they are given they are normal names one is called Esquilin Majina yao ya kawaida moja inaitwa Esquilin but maybe because of uh, it might not be an English name possibly a, a Spanish name possibly they call it Esquilin or something like that Ni wenda ni jina la Kispaniola kwa maana si jina la Kiingereza Paratin Paratin Aventin Aventin Capitolin Capitolin Quirinal Quirinal Vaminal Vaminol and Caerian Hill Ka- Caerian hill. Na mlima wa Caerian. These are hills around around Rome. Hizi ni milima zimezunguka taifa la Rome. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. That's why verse 9 says. Ndio maana mstari wa 9 inasema. Uh, verse 9 of the Bible says. Mstari wa 9 kwa Biblia inasema. That this called for a mind with wisdom. Hapa ndipo penye akili pamoja na hekima. Because the seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits kwa maana vile vichwa saba na vilima saba ambavyo huyo mwanamke amevikalia another misery here siri nyingine hapa is now verse 10 ni sasa mstari wa 10 there are also seven kings pia kuna falme wa falme saba uh, five have fallen watano miongoni mwao wamekwisha kuanguka one is mwingine hajaja bado and another has not yet come na mwingine lakini a, moja yupo na mwingine hajakuja but when he does come lakini atakapokuja he must remain for a little while atalazimika kukaa kwa muda mfupi let us first stop there wacha tukomee pale kwanza now when we read daniel chapter 2 tuliposoma danieli mlango wa pili we saw all those kingdoms tukaona falme hizo zote and the kingdoms that were being shown na falme ambazo zilikuwa zinaonyeshwa they come from nebukadnezar was the first king zilikuwa zinaanzia nebukadnezar akiwa mfalme wa kwanza there was the persians and the medes alafu kulikuwa na wa perisi na medes and then there was the the greeks alafu kulikuwa na wayunani then they are from the greeks alafu kutoka kwa wayunani they are followed the romans ukukafuata wa rumi so those are five kwa hivyo hawa ni watano during the vision that uh, dan i mean uh, that john was being shown na katika maono ambayo yohana alionyeshwa he was being shown alikuwa anaonyeshwa that in future ya kwamba uh, siku sijazo when he was being shown he was being told and wa alipokuwa anaonyeshwa akaambiwa that already ya kwamba tayari five kings have fallen wafalme watano wamekwisha anguka nini kuimanisha from nebukadnezar kutoka nebukadnezar to uh, to the romans hadi kwa warumi all the kings were not there hawa falme hawakuepo tena from now the romans kuanzia sasa hapo kwa warumi e, mtu mmoja atuondolee huyo mgeni e, one of the ashes atuondolee huyo mgeni hapa haleluya asha mmoja mwanaume asante sana Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. So wengine agarieni pande hii. Hiyo <laughs> kazi imefanyika. So now Bahi, sasa after the Romans baada ya Warumi those others that ruled the world hao wengine ambao walitawala dunia were the Europeans. Walikuwa ni 
uh, wazungu uh, the, we, wa mataifa ya Europa that came to colonize the world ambao walikuja kutawala dunia the nations of the world walikuja kutawala mataifa ya dunia those are the ones he was being told na hao ndio walikuwa naambiwa that another one is coming ya kwamba nyingine inakuja the sixth one is coming ya, ya sita inakuja because that is what he was told kwa maana hiyo ndio aliambiwa uh, that five have fallen ya kwamba watano wamekwisha anguka one is that is the european union moja yupo yani umoja wa mataifa ya europa then another one alafu nyingine then another has not yet come alafu nyingine haja 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 bado but when he comes lakini atakapokuja he must remain for a little while atalazimika kukaa kwa muda mfupi after european union baada ya uh, utawala wa mataifa ya europa the authority that followed mamlaka ambayo ilifuata is that of the great eight nations ni ile ya mataifa nane kuu and that is what is described in the vision that daniel saw na hicho ndicho inaelezewa katika maono ambayo daniel aliona and recorded in daniel chapter 7 ambayo imerekodiwa kwa daniel mlango wa 7 verse 7 and 8 msari wa 7 na 8 whereby ambapo there is another beast the fourth beast kuna mnyama wa 4 it had 10 horns ilikuwa na pembe 10 then another horn came up alafu pembe lingine likajipuka and uprooted three na likangoa tatu then it grew it started small ilianza ikiwa ndogo and grew aikaendelea kuwa and then alafu it was given a mouth and the eyes of a human being ikapewa kinywa na macho ya mwanadamu then it is started speaking boastfully alafu ikaanza kunena kwa makufuru kwa kujigamba the great eight nations na baada ya hiyo mataifa nane ku there is one that is boastful kuna moja ambaye ina kujigamba sana i don't mean to mention it but it is there sihitaji kusema lakini iko pale bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe and the bible says na biblia inasema the eighth king ya kwamba yule mfalme wa nane is now the beast sasa ni yule mnyama or the antichrist ama mpinga kristo not this current one si huyu wa sasa bwana asifiwe okay sorry i have not described it well when daniel i mean when john saw him here wakati Yohana alimwona hapa he was shown alionyeshwa that his body was red scarlet ya kwamba mwili wake ulikuwa mwekundu but uh, earlier on lakini hapo mbeleni in uh, revelation 13 katika ufunuo Yohana 13 he looks like a leopard alikuwa anakaa kama chui he was being described that was used to describe the person that he would be the I, personality hiyo ilikuwa inaelezea ilikuwa inatumika kuelezea tabia zake eh, vile ambavyo atakuwa then the bible continues to say na biblia inaendelea kusema that is uh, revelation chapter 17 ufunuo Yohana 17 verse uh, revelation 17 Ufuno Yohana 17 We read now verse 11. Tusome sasa mstari wa 11. The beast who once was and now is not is the eighth king. Yule mnyama aliyekuepo wakati fulani na ambaye sasa hayupo ni yule mfalme wa nane He belongs to the seven. Ni miongoni mwa wale saba And is going to his destruction. Na yeye anakwenda maangamizi. Verse 12 of 12. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom. Zile pembe kumi ulizoziona ni wafalme kumi ambao bado hawajapokea ufalme. But who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. Lakini ambao watapokea mamlaka kwa wafalme kwa wakati mmoja pamoja na yule mnyama. So beloved people ivyo wapendwa the g8 nation the great eight nations mataifa manane makuu tajiri they are ruled by 10 kings zinatawaliwa na wafalme 10 bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe because kwa sababu these nations mataifa haya uh, canada canada uh, the usa uh, umoja wa mataifa ya marekani there is france kuna yo faransa there is england kuna england there is uh, germany kuna ujerumani there is japan kuna japan there is italy kuna italy and russia na russia bwana asifiwe so kwa hivyo uh, italy italy has two nations in one ni mataifa mawili kwa moja it has two kingdoms iko na falme mbili kwa pamoja because rome is inside italy kwa maana rome iko ndani ya italy and it has its own kingdom its own rules its own currency and the king there is the pope iko na kama falme yake yenyewe iko na sarafu yake ya pesa na mtawala pale ni mkiongozi wa kanisa katoliki but there is also a king on the throne lakini pia kuna mtawala ambaye kwa katika enzi on the mainstream government katika uh, serikali ya uh, taifa lote la Italy in England 
kule England there are two centers of power kuna uh, mamlaka ni katika sehemu mbili there is uh, the monarch kuna taifa uh, familia ya, ya mfalme ya kifalme ya kifalme and also the other government that has the prime minister na hile serikali ingine ambayo inaongozwa inaongozwa na waziri mkuu that why you hear people saying that a prime minister with executive powers na ndio unasikia kwamba waziri mkuu ana mamlaka ya juu bwana asifiwe haleluya haleluya are we together eh kwa nini munarara na niwaambia mambo yaliyo current affairs na wasomea gazeti sasa Haleluya. Mnaona ile gazeti wanasoma asubuhi mapema. Nawasomea gazeti kwa sababu that's where we are now. Hapo ndipo tuko kwa sasa. Then kisha the Bible says okay Biblia nasema there are 10 kings. Wao ni wafalme 10. These 10 kings how wafalme 10 they will rule for one hour. Watatawala kwa lisa moja. Not one hour our hour. Si lisa moja kwa masaa ya dunia. But God's hour. Lakini kwa masaa ya Mungu. But then lakini they will give the authority watapeana mamlaka to another king mamlaka zao kwa mfalme mwingine haleluya haleluya then the bible says na biblia nasema ah uh, he says this that that is uh, verse 11 mstari wa 11 the beast who once was and now is not is the eighth king he belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction yule mnyama aliyekuepo wakati fulani na ambaye sasa hayupo yeye ni mfalme wa nane ni miongoni mwa wale saba naye anakwenda kwenye maangamizi the ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom zile pembe kumi ulizoziona ni wafalme kumi ambao bado hawajapokea ufalme but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast lakini watapokea wa, uh, ambao watapokea mamlaka kuwa wafalme wakati mmoja pamoja na yule mnyama. Now pay attention to verse 13. Sasa zingatie mstari wa 13. They have one purpose. Hawa wana nia moja. And will give their power and authority to the beast. Nao watamwachia yule mnyama nguvu zao na mamlaka yao. So the reason they are giving Antichrist their power is because of one purpose. Sababu ambayo wanampatia mpinga Kristo mamlaka yao yote ni kwa sababu ya nia moja. That purpose is in verse 14. Hiyo nia moja imeandikwa kwa mlango mstari wa 14 says mstari wa 14 inasema we wage war against the lamb watafanya vita na mwana kondoo but the lamb will triumph over them because he is the lord of lords lakini mwana kondoo atawashinda kwa maana yeye ni bwana wa mabwana haleluya haleluya you can see the conspiracy unaweza kuona hiyo mkono hiyo ni mjama mbaya na hawa wafalme meant it is directed to the christ na imelenga inemlenga christ the lamb mwana kondoo but now lakini sasa the lamb mwana kondoo will triumph over them atawashinda wote haleluya haleluya bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe listen to the people sikiza wapendwa you know Maybe we have ignored these things before. Eh? Wale tumepuuza mambo haya hapa mbeleni. But you see all those kings who are seated on the throne in the G8 nations. Lakini unaona hawa wafalme wote ambao wanatawala mataifa haya manane. Si mnaona. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They look innocent when they are seated in the office. Wanakaa kana kwamba hawana nia mbaya. But the Bible says so they, they have one purpose. Lakini Biblia nasema wana kusudi against the Messiah, the Lamb. Kupigana vita dhidi ya Mesia. Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Human beings. Mwanadamu. Nations that are powerful and rich. Mataifa ambayo ni tajiri na yana nguvu. That their work. Ya kwamba kazi yao. Is to wage war. Ni kupigana vita. Against didi, the lamp of God. Ya mwana kondoo wa Mungu. But the Bible promises them. Lakini Biblia inawaahidi. Today. Leo. That they will lose. They will miss that they will be defeated miserably. Ya kwamba watashindwa kwa aibu sana. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Are we together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, sasa when we are being invited to be to be wedded by the Lord Jesus. Wakati tunaalikwa kuolewa na Bwana wetu Yesu. I wonder why we delay. Najiuliza ni kwa nini tunachelewa? Because if that is the kind of war he is going to fight and win. Kwa maana ikiwa hiyo ndio aina ya vita ambayo inaenda kupigana na atashinda. Then I would like to be on the winning side. Basi ni heri ni kuwa upande wa ushindi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like that very much. Nitapenda hiyo sana. Si ndio? Hallelujah. Nyinyi mnaonaje? Si ukisikia mtu ni successful you be very happy. Even you want to tell people some stories, eh? Some good stories. For example, 
we used to attend church one time with the, the family of Ishungwa Ishungwa Tul- family tulikuwa tunaenda kanisani na familia Ishungwa and uh, there were two the last born is a girl then the mp for Kikuyu is the second last so we used to line up together tukigojea gari ya ya 105 ya kutupeleka kutoka Kikuyu kukuja town tulikuwa tunapanga wow. tulikuwa tunapanga laini kungoja gari ya nambari 105 itulete kutoka Kikuyu kutuleta mjini at least baba yao alikuwa ka counselor so wao alikuwa na tuprot tuprot huko so walikuwa naletwa na gari ya baba yao sisi tukiwa tumenyeshewa unaona mkiingia kwa matatu unaona wanakaa hivi kwa sababu wewe umenyeshewa sana na yeye hajanyeshewa haleluya <laughs> bwana asifiwe lakini kwa hiyo watu wote walipaga laini ya 105 nikemani shongo peke yake alikuwa hapo si walikuwa watu wengi haleluya but the others are not there so those are the stories we give hizo ndizo ndizo hadithi ambazo tunatoa ni kweli ama si kweli Yeah, those are the stories we give. Is on this hadith ya Mzee Tata. What about now we are giving a eternal story Nadine. in heaven that you see that the one who has taken me and has wedded me is the one who triumphed over these kings and brought them down. Najie wakati tutakuwa tunatoa hadithi mbinguni ya kwamba yule amenichukua na akanioa ni yule ambaye aliweza kupigana na kushinda hao wafalme wote kumi. Is that not a good story to give in heaven? Je, hiyo si itakuwa hadithi nzuri kutoa mbinguni? Si hadithi mzuri bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe but that is not no, nobody will have uh, will give that story in hell lakini hakuna mtu atatoa hadithi kama hiyo jehanamu wewe wakati uliumia kidogo ukakatwa na panga eh ulikuwa unapewa watu story ama ulikuwa unasikiliza uchugu kitikisa tikisa kidole hivi na mkono eh ulikuwa unafanya nini sio unasikiliza uchugu yenye iko ndani ya kichwa yako haleluya So it means that story will not be given in hell. It will be given in heaven. Hiyo hadithi haitapeanwa jehanamu itapeanwa mbinguni. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. And it is a true story. Na ni hadithi ya ukweli. Because it talks about the current state of affairs. Kwa maana inazungumzia mambo yalivyo kwa sasa. What are happening in the world? Ambayo yanatendeka kwa sasa duniani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know being armed with these things, eh? Ukiwa umejaa ama umejiami na mambo haya is good so that you can preach to your own people. Ni mzuri ili uweze kuhubiria watu wako mwenyewe. Let us continue. Wacha tuendelee. That is uh, verse uh, 14. Mstari wa 14. Uh, okay, I wanted to finish it but let us read again verse 14 so that we can finish uh, at, 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 at the end. They will wage war against the lamb. Watafanya vita dhidi ya mwanakondoo. But the lamb will triumph over them because he is the lord of lords and the king of kings. Lakini mwanakondoo atawashinda kwa sababu yeye ni bwana wa mabwana na mfalme wa wafalme. And with him na, na yeye will be his god. Yeye atakuwa pamoja na watu wake chosen and faithful followers. Walioitwa ambao ni wateule wake na wafuasi wake waaminifu. When he triumph over them. Wakati atakapo atakapowashinda and uh, bring them down. Na kuwashusha chini. When they come to in, you see they are the ones who are planning to wage war against the lamb. Hao ndio wanapanga njama ya kupiga vita mwana kondoo. And notice the Bible is not talking is not calling him here the king. Eh? First of all it is saying the lamb. Isingatia Biblia hapa imuiti mfalme inamuita mwana kondoo. Then the kings of the earth. Alafu wafalme wa dunia. They are planning and sitting in boardrooms. Wanakaa katika majumba cha boardroom akipanga. To wage war. Wapange vile watapigana vita. The lamb. Na mwana kondoo wa Mungu. Not even the lamb. L A M. Lamb ni yule dume mkubwa wa kondoo. Hiyo hiyo Biblia inasema the lamb. Mwana kondoo inasema mwana kondoo hata si kondoo ambaye amekomaa ni mwana kondoo then huyo mwana kondoo atawatwanga wote na awamalise when he is the lamb wakati yeye ni mwana kondoo the reason sababu is though they think he is the lamb ni kwamba ingawa wanadhani yeye ni mwana kondoo he's also the king of kings and the lord of lords yeye pia ni mfalme wa wafalme na bwana wa mabwana bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe so, hakuna mfalme anaweza tisha yeye hakuna bwana anaweza tisha yeye yeye ndio bwana wao na mfalme wa wafalme haleluya you get me beloved Now, Kuna let us continue verse 15. Then the angel said to me. Kisha yule malaika akaniambia. The waters you saw. Yale maji uliyoyaona. That is where the prostitute sits. Yule kahaba akiwa meketi juu. Are peoples 
yake ni jamaa za watu attitudes makutano nations mataifa and languages na lugha that means ina maanisha when he saw that the prostitute sits on many waters wakati aliona yule kaaba ameketi juu ya maji mengi she sits on nations anakalia juu ya mataifa she sits on languages anakalia juu ya lugha she sits on the tribes of people anakalia juu ya majamaa za watu people of different colors watu wa rangi tofauti tofauti she sits over them amewakalia wote hallelujah Hallelujah. Those are the waters. Ayo, ayo that also explains. Why the beast in Revelation chapter 13? Ni kwa nini mnyama ufunuo Yohana 13? Like the leopard. Ambaye anakaa kama chui. The Bible says that it came from the the, the water. Biblia inasema ilitoka majini. Kumbe it was not the water. Kumbe haikuwa maji. The normal water. Maji ya kawaida. Because a leopard kwa maana chui does not live in water. Huwa haishi maji. Hallelujah lives in the forest anaishi mwituni so kwa hivyo it means this is a human being a man huyu ni mwanadamu who will calise from other men ambaye atainuka miongoni mwa wanadamu the bible says the water ambaye biblia inaeleza kama maji he is the antichrist kisha yeye sasa atakuwa mpiga kristo this prostitute sits on people na huyu kaaba anakaa juu ya watu and these people of many nations na hao watu wa mataifa mengi many languages lugha mingi and she has subjected them na amewatisha wote you know to our authority kwa mamlaka chini ya mamlaka yake then the bible says something else alafu biblia inasema jambo lingine verse 16 mstari wa 16 the beast and the ten horns kwamba zile so we let the prostitute Okay. Zile pembe kumi ulizoziona pamoja na huyo mnyama they will bring her to ruin and leave her naked. Watamchukia huyo kahaba watamfilisi na kumwacha uchi. They will eat her fresh and burn her with fire. Watamla nyama yake na kumteketeza kwa moto. For God has put in their hearts to accomplish his purpose. Kwa maana Mungu ameweka miongoni mwao kutimiza kusudi lake. By agreeing to hand over to the beast their loyal authority. Kwa kukubali kumpa yule mnyama mamlaka yao ya utawala until God's word words are fulfilled mpaka wakati maneno ya Mungu yatakapotimia the woman you saw yule mwanamke uliyemuona is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth ni ule mji mkubwa unaotawala juu ya wafalme wa dunia bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe haleluya ni mji gani unatawala chini ya dunia let me explain to you maybe you don't know wacha niwaelezee uenda haujui i was reading somewhere nilikuwa nasoma mahali and i found this na nikagundua hii i checked uh, the stories of uh, that uh, that are in the news nikaangalia hadithi ambazo zinapatikana kwa vyombo uh, vya habari about rome kuhusu roma so rome roma they say wanasema the ancient city of rome has many nicknames ya kwamba mji wa kale wa rome roma a roma iko na majina tofauti ambazo zimebandikwa and uh, these names majina haya bandia first of all the city is called roma in latin inaitwa roma kwa kilatino which has an uncertain origin ambaye uh, mahali ambapo ilitoka haijulikani people believe watu wanaamini it was a name of a king called romulus ilikuwa ni jina ya mfalme aitwaye romulus who was kwa Uh, who was the city founder ambaye alianzisha ule mji which translates to or or swift ambaye uh, maana yake ni o e r or or swift inaonyesha wa mwendo wa kazi so rom uh, derives from uh, aberian language Inato- aberian language that is where the word might mean flowing waters inaweza pia kumaanisha maji ya tiririkayo now Sasa, Some of these names. Baadhi ya haya majina. They is like uh, they call Rome as it, Roma, eternal city. Kama mji wa milele, mji wa milele. Then also it is called Caput Mundi. That is the capital of the world. Pia inaitwa Caput Mundi, yani mji mkuu wa dunia. That is a totally different story elsewhere from Hiyo, the Bible. Hiyo ni hadithi tofauti sana na kwa Biblia. And uh, it is written by someone who is not may, may not necessarily be even a believer. Na imeandikwa na mtu ambaye huenda hata si muumini. But you see, lakini unaona they are calling it the eternal city. Wanaiita mji wa milele. And uh, the city of uh, the someone also called Saint Augustine, he called it the city of God. Mtu aitai aitwaye Saint Augustine akawita mji wa Mungu. Then it has those mountains. Alafu iko na zile vilima that uh, the city is uh, that uh, they also mean the reason they are there that there was an italian painter 
who who said that the best way he can describe long he described it as this kulikuwa na mchoraji wa kiitaliano ambaye alisema kwamba namna mzuri ambaye anaweza kueleza mji wa roma ni hivi the city of echoes the city of echoes echo ile ya inaitwa mwangwi the echo eh? mji wa echo yani ile sauti ambayo ni kama ukiongea inarudi nyuma